you all. Thank you. Hello, welcome, and thank you all very much for being part of our uh, studio audience here today. Uh, welcome and greetings to all those who are joining us on DirecTV as well as uh, on the, online on the internet. Hello to everyone and welcome. I'm Brother Bob Pauline, Minister of the Gospel here in the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, and welcome to this live taping of That's in the Bible. Thank you for being our live studio audience, and we just want to thank you for not only just being here today, but for helping us reach out to the world and making them know the Church of Christ and the teachings of God we embrace inside the Church of Christ from here in the Holy Scriptures. You know, here in the program, That's in the Bible, we, we receive... Uh, questions about just about every topic imaginable from, well, pretty much all, all parts of the globe. And we always turn here to, to the Holy Bible for the answers to any and all of the questions that, uh, that we receive, as we will be doing together uh, this afternoon, uh, this day uh, as well. But our question for today, first of all, it uh, comes from, or actually there's uh, two individuals that have uh, posed this question. First is uh, uh, Mr. Chuck uh, Swift, as well as Cynthia Dykos. And they bring up a subject that, well, I, I'm sure many ponder, have pondered upon uh, before. It concerns the, 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 the meaning of life. Let's listen together how they pose the question. In living this life and seeing the ups and the downs, and, you know, as happy as we can be, to as low as life can get, are we supposed to be saving this world like Jesus Christ? Or are we meant to just live through this life and experience it to, you know, our next whatever it might be? And my question is, how do you know when your life has been fulfilled? They ask it in different ways. But uh, to, to sum it up, they're, they're asking questions about what's, what's the meaning of life? How do you know when it's going to be fulfilled? How do you know when it's, it's, it's purpose? Has, has been met. What is the meaning of life? There, there have, you know, there have been people that have, uh, let's say they have gained, they've gained fame, they've, they've gained honor, they, they have uh, amassed uh, great wealth, but still they find themselves discontented, they find themselves unfulfilled, they find themselves just not, not satisfied, regardless of who we are. It's become, let's call it a universal human drive to assign meaning to our being. So, what are some of the ways that people think they can give meaning to their life? Studio audience, those of you here with us, here in the studio audience, what, what do you think? What is a way by which people strive to give meaning in their life? What do you think would give meaning to a person's life? We, we've asked that question and gotten all kinds of different answers. How about from anyone in the studio, wants, uh, studio audience today? What gives life meaning? What would be one? Anybody? Our children. Sure. Family. Children. Others might think of what? Uh, concerning their careers. What would they want for their career in order to give meaning to their life? Success. success. Precisely. Whether it's, it's money, success, family, have a good career, have a good job. They will enumerate many things like that and measure the uh, condition of the, their, their purpose in life by such things. But, but really, will those things give any true meaning to our lives? What is the meaning of our life, our purpose? What are we here for? So that, that's, that's the question that they have posed. That's the question we pose together right now. And we turn to Isaiah. Uh, 22, uh, 13, uh, to begin our, our study. The prophet Isaiah responds, uh, responds like this. Instead, you laughed and celebrated. You killed sheep and cattle to eat, and you drank wine. You said, we might as well eat and drink. Tomorrow, we'll be dead. So for many, what's, what's life mean to them? What, what does... What do they find in life to give themselves purpose? The meaning of life for so many is that have not yet, let's say, they have not yet found the, 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 the focal point for their spiritual energies. So their conclusion, well, let's eat, let's drink, 
it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a kind of an excuse or a justification for fulfilling all of their human impulses. Their purpose in life becomes, and I think we all know people like this, their purpose in life becomes what? Self-gratification. To become most comfortable, to become most, yes, most comfortable. I guess it's the best way of saying it, right? But for those who possess this kind of principle, what kind of... Uh, what kind of principle will they, will they be embracing concerning the value of their life? How, will they, how would they say would, would, their life will become significant? It's not just a waste. For them, what is their, me their meaning or what's the meaning of life? What is the purpose of their life? Let's, let's continue in King Solomon's pronouncements on this uh, important topic here. And we're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter uh, chapter 5, uh, verses uh, 18, uh, verses 18 and, and 19. Here's what I have found out. The best thing we can do is eat and drink and enjoy what we have worked for during the short life that God has given us. This is our fate. If God gives us wealth and property and lets us enjoy them, we should be grateful and enjoy what we have worked for. It is a gift from God. And I think all of us know people that think this way. They, they, they even have a term for it nowadays. They call it uh, YOLO. Come on, studio audience. What's YOLO? YOLO. Yeah, you only live once. Okay, so only live once. Live for the moment, they would say. Well, God allowed us to acquire this. God allowed us to acquire that. He allowed us to do this, to do that. It's fun, enjoyable. So let's eat, drink, and be merry. YOLO. We all know people like that? Studio audience, what do you say? You know somebody like that? Yes. I'm not going to ask if you're like that. Okay, I, I promise I will not ask that. But wh why do they consider this as, as their life principle, though? Uh, or the, the, the valuable way of, of thinking in their, in, in their mindset? The best thing that they can do in their life is to uh, uh, eat, drink, and be merry, live uh, for the moment. It's because they are aware, as we just read there, that life is very short. So they want to fulfill it. They want to live it to the fullest. They're saying it's only, it's, it's, it's short, so let's, let's do it all. For them, uh, life can really only have significance or importance if, they're enjoying it. If they're not enjoying it, it can't be valuable. That's, that's, their way, that's their way of thinking. But do people with this way of thinking, do they, do they really understand yet? Okay, I want to emphasize that word yet. Do they really understand yet the true meaning of life and the purpose of our existence? We're not here just to wake up every day, eat, breathe, go to sleep, and wake up on another new day and do the same thing. That's not it. How many of you think, here in the studio audience, how many viewing us from uh, abroad and anywhere else in the world, how many of you think that those who have the YOLO mindset, how many think they got it all figured out and they're on the right track? How many think that way? Do you think a high percentage of people in the world do entertain that way of thinking. What do you say? Yes, yes. yes. They, there is a lot who are thinking that way. Is there any example in the Holy Scriptures of someone who had that way of thinking and then the Lord gave some response and some counsel that we can all benefit from learning or reading about that, that encounter? Well, obviously there is, and I'd like to take a moment to read that. It's uh, recorded here in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses uh, 16 uh, through 19. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was once a rich man who had land which bore good crops. He began to think to himself, I don't have a place to keep all my crops. What can I do? This is what I will do, he told himself. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, where I will store the grain and all my other goods. 
Then I will say to myself, lucky man, you have all the good things you need for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. Well, here's, here's one example, right? Who, who was it? Who is the example mentioned here? How does the Bible describe this individual? The rich man. Rich man. What, was, uh, what was he thinking? Well, that, 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 that might seem like a, a responsible thing that he said, right? I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to hoard everything that I got. I'm gonna, it's the same thing as saving. But saying I'm, I'm going to save it all, right? And then I'm going to eat and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink and enjoy all of it. So let's see, uh, did, uh, did, did, God, did God say, uh, what did God say to, him, say to him? How'd that work out for him with that way of thinking? I got all this, now I'm just going to enjoy it all. Especially when it comes to his eternal life, when it comes to his salvation, was simply having a bigger barn was simply eating and drinking and, and, and enjoying the moment. YOLO, huh? Is, well, let's just repeat the question. How will all that work out for him? We read up to verse 19. Let's, uh, let's read this time verse, uh, verse 20. But God said to him, You fool! This very night... You will have to give up your life. Then who will get all these things you have kept for yourself? So here was someone who was living that uh, and, and entertaining, or let's say embracing that way of thinking. Just eat, drink, and be married. Live for the moment. That's what will give my life meaning. If I'm enjoying it, then it's got a purpose. What, what, did, what did God say to the rich man who had that way of thinking? What did he call him? Fool. Okay, studio audience, raise your hand if, if you're foolish. Uh -huh. <laughs> of course, no, nobody's going to raise their hand, right? Nobody would want to acknowledge that, that they are foolish. And it's not we who would be accusing anyone or calling anyone of being foolish. That was God and, and through the conversation that the Lord had with that rich man telling him it would be foolish to entertain that way of thinking or to think that life's purpose ends or is simply rooted upon enjoying the life the Lord given to, has given to us. So those who would think that their life would become meaningful if they would spend it in merrymaking, eating, drinking, they were called, uh, they were called fools in the sight of God because they don't yet possess an important understanding. They don't have an understanding yet of the true and real reason for life and our existence. They do not yet know the meaning and significance of life. But, beloved studio audience with us, everyone, there is hope, there is always hope for our knowledge to grow, our understanding to deepen. So what then must everyone realize in order for life to become truly meaningful? For one to have purpose. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, this time verse, verse 9. We turn to the Holy Scriptures again for, for the Bible's response. Young people, enjoy your youth. So allow me to pause. Is God against anybody enjoying life? No, no he's, 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 not, he's not opposed to that. <coughs> enjoy your youth. Be happy while you are still young. So is God against people being happy? What are you saying? No. He's not against that. Now let's read from the beginning. Young people, enjoy your youth. Be happy while you are still young. Do what you want to do and follow your heart's desire. But remember that God is going to judge you for whatever you do. Dear friends, what then is going to give life meaning? 
It's, if it's not just enjoying every moment that we are here in this world, we've got to know that everything that we are doing, just like we have what just read, everything that we are doing in this day-to-day -day existence here is going to be judged by God. Everything we say, everything we do has purpose, has meaning, once a person realizes that what we say and what we are doing is important to God and in fact will be judged by Him. That's what will give life meaning. That's what will give a person purpose. That's what will give importance to what we do each and every day of our life, each and every moment that we are alive. But where, where does the Bible further explain uh, this, this point? I'd like to turn to this, this time to the writings of, of Apostle Paul, where he gave some additional insight on this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, uh, 2 Corinthians rather, verse uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 10, reads this way. Sooner or later, we'll all have to face God, regardless of our conditions. We will appear before Christ and take what's coming to us as a result of our actions, either good or bad. You only live once, eat, drink, and be merry. Do whatever you want to do, they will say. Live your life any way that you want to. We are free. What cannot be forgotten if we want to have life mean something is that we are going to have to answer for every action that we take. The Bible describes very clearly there to us. It's, we'll be standing before the judgment seat of the Lord and we're going to be judged, not regarding simply by what we believe in, by what we know is good, what we believe is the right thing for us to say, the right thing for us to do, but whether or not we are doing it. Whether we have done good things or done bad things, that is the determining factor whether or not what we have done is relevant and makes our life meaningful. And, and of course, we should know God doesn't set us up to fail. He provides us guidance in this life so that, well, our life will truly have value. It will truly have meaning. And what is it that God wants all of us to learn? What does he want us all to remember so that your life, my life, our life will have meaning to it? What does he want us to understand, which so many just haven't grasped yet? But it's our prayer that everyone here in the studio audience and everyone watching us everywhere around the world will understand what God wants us to understand. And what is that? Uh, let's, let's take a look here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, uh, verse, uh, we'll read here first. Uh, verse 1, where it says, So, remember your Creator while you are still young, before those dismal days and years come when you will say, I don't enjoy life. W what's God's instruction? He said, well, remember Him. Remember your Creator while you're still young. Oh, what does it mean to remember God? Can we call that uh, some may ask the, the, the question, I say, can we really call that a purpose? Can you really say that that gives meaning to life, remembering God? Can we call that our purpose in life? Well, let's, let's continue. The same, the same chapter, he went on uh, further to say in verse 13 this, After all this, there is only one thing to say. Have reverence for God and obey His commands because this is all that we were created for. Remember that he created us. Remember the purpose for which we have been created, that we will come to know him, that we will come to serve him, that we will be obedient to him, and that everything that we do in this life, we, we will be judged. 
and he will decide whether or not we are ready and worthy to enter his kingdom. That gives our life and the things we do meaning. And to conclude, I'd like to read this, this same the same verse in yet another rendition of the Holy Scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, which we just read. I'll read 13 again and include verse 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Your friends, that's it. We are here for a purpose. It's not just YOLO, just live for the moment and, and never mind anything. Just make sure to grab for all the self-gratification that one may acquire in this life. That is not the end all for humanity. The meaning of life is... It, it valuable and life itself is valuable because it can be used to show to the Lord we're fulfilling our duty to know Him, to understand Him, to serve Him, to be obedient and to be judged worthy, to enter His kingdom on the day of judgment. If we just eat, drink, and be merry and die at the end of it all, then we're no different than any other animal or biological entity that lives on planet Earth. No different at all, and we would have the same end. Anyone in denial of that, their search for the true meaning of life and justification of their existence would be an abject failure. Their tomorrow, live for today, for tomorrow we will die mindset and outlook on life will have caused them to live their life based upon a wrong principle, a wrong principle which they ended up following and they adopted and led their lives by it. Therefore, they, they end up confused about the purpose of their life. So they attempt to give their life meaning, to give their life importance in all the self-gratifying ways imaginable. So, to really give life, to conclude, to really give life meaning and importance, we need to learn God's ways, live our life guided by them, and bring ourselves to be worthy, therefore, of true life, real life, eternal life, with him in his kingdom, a place much different than our life and the, that we experience here in this world. Join in our continued study of God's commands, especially all of you who are guests and listening and joining with us in our study for the first time. Join in our continued Bible study of God's teachings. The Bible, it's, it's, it's full of God's teachings and instructions about life and the journey that we travel through this life that may be filled with all kinds of trials and tests of our perseverance that God allows us to experience in this temporary world. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for the questions that were sent in. We encourage everyone to also send in your video questions too, just like, just like they did. You can just, just, just video yourself posing any kind of question and, and we'll, we'll use it on this program. And just like always, turn to the Holy Scriptures and there together we'll find the Lord's answer and the response, his teaching to us that will guide and direct us in our journey in this life. Because there is no question that is too basic, no question that cannot be answered by the Holy Scriptures when it comes to our lives, to our salvation. If you'd like to know more about the basic, fundamental teachings that we believe in and are found here inside the Church of Christ, please visit our website. What's our website? incmedia.org. Uh, yes, correct. incmedia.org. And you can send your video questions to answers at incmedia.org. And you can see your questions answered right here on what program? That's in the Bible. Thank you for joining us in this episode of That's in the Bible. We'll see you again next time.
Thank you all, thank you for coming guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming.